what's going on everyone welcome back to another video so i got a computer here this is a desktop computer from my aunt we're going to go ahead and uh get it plugged up and uh see what issues we can try to recreate if you're not a subscriber to my youtube channel please be kind to hit that subscribe button and check that notification button as well let's get to it baby because I got another project computer right here. Wait. I'm going to go ahead and remove this protective cover off. This is a home workstation. All right. Home workstation. My aunt, she's, uh, she's old school. I love my art, but she is old school. So, she actually has the ports and stuff labeled. So, first you connect the power, second video, third USB, and another USB port. So, probably mouse, keyboard, fourth network. A lot of uh, family members, you know, such as like your elder family members. Whenever it comes to computers, they'll probably do the same thing, or they'll probably have like a picture to kind of remind them how to reconnect stuff. So, to kind of give you guys a story, like how I actually started learning about computers, my dad he had a uh, old computer, very old computer. I think it was like Windows. Uh, I want to say ninety-five, Windows ninety-five, or Windows uh, ME, one of those systems. It was old, and. You know, one day I wanted to learn about computers. So, uh, the first thing I did to actually learn about computers is, you know, I pressed the power on, and the computer came on, and I just started typing on a keyboard and mouse and uh, started figuring out, you know, how to navigate. You know, that's kind of how, I, like, I got started when I was a kid. This computer, it has a built-in video card. By default, I believe at home, they're using a VGA to probably VGA. This computer also has a HDMI port, so we can actually utilize that for graphics. Uh, right now, I just have a DVI connector. So I just have to uh, get a converter and I can get this thing connected. We can at least just plug up the power and take the screws off. Now... I would not advise anyone else to do this. I've been working on computers for a while. The computer is on. Again, I would not advise anyone else to do this. Hmm. I'm not receiving any BIOS post beeps or anything like that. So it sounds like the computer could have booted up to the windows. Visually looking at this computer, I'm not seeing any visual signs of hardware related issues. Motherboard looks to be okay. I don't see any burnt marks. I don't see any uh, bad capacitators, damaged microprocessor chips. I'm not hearing any crazy noise. Fairly quiet computer. So potentially, I'm also, I need to look at this hard drive, see how much space it is. We may do an overhaul or we may just do a operating system refresh. More than likely operating system refresh, but we'll see. See you guys on the next video because right now it's late at night. So knock this bad boy out on the weekend. When it comes to your first case scenario, when you're troubleshooting a computer for a display issue, you check the output device, the cabling, and then you channel it down to troubleshooting from a computer. Okay, again, troubleshoot from the output, which is the monitor, check the cabling, and then troubleshoot from the computer perspective, computer hardware. Take the computer case off. So I got a couple of cables here. This black cable is just for video. So I'm gonna just reconnect the original equipment we really don't need to connect the mouse or keyboard right now, but we got video, power. All right, 
monitor is already up and computer as soon as i plugged it up the computer automatically turned on by itself whenever i'm in the field and i see a computer automatically powered on when i connected the power cable to the actual power supply and that computer did not display an image that represented some element of the motherboard has many function. I've already checked the motherboard for physical sign of burnt microchips, blown capacitators, or any physical or water damage to the motherboard. I don't see anything like that. This may be electrical damage done to the motherboard, which is very, very common during a lightning storm. And that lightning storm just happens to knock out the neighborhood power cause a power service interruption abruptly, which basically just automatically terminates the computer power source without allowing all of the components to properly go into a shutdown. That energy shock can really cause damage to your computer system, which is the same common issue where if you're working on a computer, do not just go start touching components especially if you got like a screwdriver or some tools. Don't just start touching stuff while the computer's on because that electric discharge can short a motherboard or any component that's sensitive to, again, electric static discharge. Personally, I already know the issue, but we're still gonna proceed with our next troubleshooting step, which is installing this aftermarket video graphics card. This is a onboard video graphics card, which does not require an additional power source cable from the power supply to connect to this graphics card. It's a really old graphics card. I usually keep them around for troubleshooting issues. Go ahead and slide this video card inside. Slide into the slot for the video display. And gently install the card. Go ahead and lock this bay. There we go. The bay is locked. Video card is now installed. Video card is installed. Let's go ahead and connect our connectors to the computer and see if we're able to resolve that issue. Connect the USB for our KVM device. Power on, and again, the computer came back on automatically just by connecting the power to the power supply. Power was on, then it powered back off. Now, when I press the CD drive, the CD drive does respond. Uh, let me switch my KVM device. KVM display has been switched around, but again, there's no image on this screen. Switch it again. And I can just state, my KVM does show a LED signal, which represents that, okay, it's attached to a device that's on. So my KVM knows that it's a device here, but the computer itself, the motherboard, is not displaying any type of image for the onboard video card, nor for a market video card. So the blue light is on. It says analog, went to digital, analog, digital. So it's trying to figure out which video signal is coming through. And then eventually what it's gonna do is just gonna just go back into standby mode. So yeah, it's it's definitely something going on with the video output signal from this motherboard. And just as a FYI, I did replace the memory chip, which, you know, replacing the RAMs, that didn't resolve the issue. And faulty RAM can cause an issue with your computer not booting up or displaying. Since we're not able to get a video source from the onboard video card, nor our aftermarket video card. 
this motherboard needs to be replaced. If you have a computer that's kind of showing these symptoms, you know, check out replacing your motherboard, see if that resolves the issue. But before you do any hardware troubleshooting steps, your first thing to do, troubleshoot from the display. So you go up to the computer display, look at the cabling, and then troubleshoot from the computer hardware perspective. I've already talked to my aunt about you know, what we're gonna do with this. She's actually in the process of now purchasing a new computer. For this one, she basically just stated that if you can find any motherboards for cheap, just throw a motherboard in there and then they'll use this as a backup. But if I'm not able to find a motherboard for cheap, then just throw it away. If I was in the business of rebuilding computers uh, and selling them, no matter how old they are, this may be something that I may, you know, rebuild and resell. The value of a computer such as like this may be totally different selling a computer like this overseas. And truth be told, that's pretty much what happens to our old computer devices. Even when we take them to an actual facility to decommission the computer device, that facility is still going to take some sort of component and resell it either you know, in our country or overseas, which they can double that profits overseas. Because again, our technology now, you know, such as a computer, this bill may be valueless in the United States, but it may be more valuable outside of the United States. So businesses that do decommission computer devices, if they have a business relationship with other businesses outside of the United States, remanufacturing computer hardware, they're gonna make some money. You're gonna pay for them to decommission your computer device and then they're gonna get some money out of it, which is legit because these computer components, they're not all made from the United States or assembled in the United States. Some of the stuff is made from other countries and other countries. Moral of the story, what I'm saying is that if you guys are thinking about getting into the business of, you know, rebuilding old computer hardware and devices to resell, I would say jump into it. Jump into it, find out who are the buyers and just make yourself marketable. And matter of fact, here in the United States, the most valuable used computer device is Mac devices. You can have an old iPad or old Mac Pro that's from like 2012, 2010, and it's still gonna sell for money. If you're really in the business to crunch for profit after profit, don't just throw away the old computer assets. Find the ones that are valuable, rebuild them, resell them, and make some money. Hopefully you guys found some valuable information out of this video. I'm planning to do more videos such as this and more product reviews. So I would highly recommend for you to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that way you can receive an update when I do release a new content video. Often I do live game streaming and in between I do actual content release videos. So uh, content release videos are rare. So I will definitely hop on and hit that notification so you can stay up to date. If you got some time, hop in the comments, let me know what you guys are working on. And if you are trying to troubleshoot an issue that you're, I wouldn't say stuck on, but you know, you may need some additional assistance or additional clarification, you know, just drop a comment in. If I got time, I'll respond to it and uh, try to help you out. I'll let y'all later. Peace.